Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keo. And I am Basil Barrington. And we are back with The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode Number 1, Apostate. IMDB gave it a 7.9. What do you think about this episode, man? It it was okay. Like, there's some good action. The You know, the story was fine. Uh, my thing with it was, like, nothing happened. <laughs> Like he's just it's like treading water for the time being until yeah. like some interesting stuff happens. Like he saw uh was a Bo Katana, he went over there, he's like, Hey mm-hmm. and she was like, Get out of here. He's like, Okay. And he left. Like <laughs> that was the end of that. That scene was unnecessary. It totally. just wanted to show the, the planet in the castle. The castle I'm like, we could have skipped that. Um I mean, like him going back to the planet where all the, the other uh Mandalorians are. And like they spent like ten minutes fighting some sea monster. I'm like, was this progressing the story at all? No. Like he was just like, <laughs> dude, that was like an alligator slash turtle. It was huge. Yeah, was historic. <laughs> I was just like, what is like you know? Once the I didn't really know what it was, but then once it turned mm-hmm. around to get rid of the, like the ropes, I was like, okay, this is an alligator because that's what alligators do. I yeah, was exactly. Just like, an alligator, really? space alligator like all right a space that's cool. alligator really that joint was pretty big and i was like oh okay well all right it's okay let me ask you this here so when they shot that mm. scene <clears throat> did it look like they shot that scene on location no that was all cgi that was a thousand percent really? CGI. yeah they, <laughs> i don't even think those guys were even there they all those with all the water CGI. and everything that was like yeah, CGI. That, was all, that was all cgi yeah they wow i don't think they would do that that's not the type of show because they they're filming everything in that that volume thing, that sound stage, yeah. Like with all the LCDs, that the entire show is done on the sound stage. <laughs> they're not. Oh my goodness! I I doubt very highly <laughs> that these guys got in the water or splashing around with that thing. That's that's a stretch. But like, let me ask you this: What's so up? the rest of the show was them rebuilding the robot, and then fighting pirates. That was the that was the whole first show. That was it. Robot and pirates, mm-hmm. and they did some hijinks with Baby Yoda, and it was like, all right, he's <laughs> back in the ship right now. Is it. I I was like, okay, we are you excited that this is back, or are you just like, man, it's another thing to review? Well, you know, <clears throat> the, the, okay, here's the thing, right? Even so, the mm-hmm. first episode was only thirty seven minutes. That's the other thing that's weird. It's like, okay, yeah, it was. This it was is the latest out. season. <laughs> Um, the first episode, and it's like 37 minutes long, not an hour long, not an hour and 15 minutes long. You know, like with, um, The Last of Us, the first episode was an hour and a half long. Yeah, yeah there's super long episodes. I'm just like, so to, to see that, that the episode was 37 minutes, that, that gave me a little pause. I was like, what's this all about? Why did they do this? You know, but if you look at mm. season two. There are mm-hmm. episodes that are like 37, 40 minutes long. But the first episode, I think the first episode, you yeah, need you gotta, more. You got to yeah, put some you, more steak in there, man. You need, you need <laughs> a bit more. So with that Where, said. Where's the beef at? I, exactly. So, um, and it was only, I guess, two pieces of beef in this like episode with the alligator and the pirate uh, scene. You I know, guess, in, guess. in space. Yeah. With, uh, Apollo Creed. The, he's, yeah. he's Apollo Creed mayor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it's it. just like, like he's, oh he's my goodness. Now. But I'm kind of, um, you know, I think a lot of people are invested in the Mandalorian, right? And, yeah, I'm um, one of them for sure. Yeah, I'm invested. I'm, I'm totally one of them. I think you know, the Mandalorian Mando is just like oh, okay, that's Mando, but. I kind of like Grogu a lot better, more, you know, (laughs) way better than like, you know, Mando. So I'm kind of Mm -hmm. interested in seeing what happens to Grogu. But the scene. Yeah, is that the end of the story there? Like he's not going to progress anymore? He's going to start talking? Yeah, because he's not getting any taller at all. (laughs) Nah, that's going to be his size for a couple hundred years. So I don't know. (laughs) You know, so, but, um, you know, the, the, it looked good. The, I mean, the first episode, like, I mean, it looked really good. I mean, the CGI, everything. Yeah, yeah, it looked nice. Know, it seems sure. like... It felt, it felt like Star Wars. Like, it felt yeah. good. It was like an old faithful. And is it me, or this is the third season? Um, mm-hmm. Is the production getting better? I mean, like, again, we saw, like, season one and two, and just how things are looking with this, like, first episode. What do you think about that? 
I would when you comparing it to like Boba Fett, then yes. Mm -hmm. But compared to Star Wars, Star Wars, I don't know. I think it's kind of hovering, like as far as quality goes. Like, I don't. I, I've never felt. And, yeah, it's like Andor is way above Mandalorian yeah. in far as mm -hmm. quality. Like, yeah, and and like the look and the feel and all that stuff. Like, it's like you're not even in the same universe. Like Mandalorian is kind of like a kid show. Andor is serious. Like that's an adult yeah. show. Yeah. They're not. They're, it doesn't feel like they're part of the same company. Like if they didn't say Star Wars in front of it, you wouldn't know. Yeah, that's and true. I, I, which is okay. Like I get like the target audience for what's what, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know how far it's progressed. It, it feels kind of stagnant, if you will, as far as like quality and writing and stuff. And I know who the it was John Favreau wrote this episode. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think he did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also with um he wrote the episode, but it was produced um by uh John Favreau and also uh Dave Filoni as well. So Yeah, yeah, they're heavily involved mm -hmm. in this show. Yeah. This is the mm -hmm. flagship show, but I Andor is kicking their butt as far as quality goes. Like there's no yeah. question. It really is, man. You know, um it's and you know, I was reading some stuff. stuff. Yeah, I was reading some stuff and like um and, and also watching some videos about this and you know, I watched a couple of videos where people were saying Star Wars is back. I'm like, no, they're not back because this <laughs> this was just OK. This wasn't like I mean, again, the first season of the latest and greatest, the first episode of the latest and greatest season. I was mm -hmm. thinking, man, this was going to be bang, bang. It was going to be crazy. We're going to have a lot okay. of action. Like suck and, you right in. Get you going. Yeah. And we've been reduced to him like, you know, well, he's been reduced to now, you know, Roman the Galaxy trying to look for a chip. And also, let's not forget, he is not a Mandalorian anymore as well. Yeah, he's just some guy with some Beskar steel. Like, I, the one problem I've had with the Mandalorian the entire show is that he's just a guy doing quests. Like, he doesn't have a personal storyline that he's trying yeah. to achieve. You know, like you have the guy like I'm trying to avenge my wife's death or whatever, or they kidnap my kid, like something. He's just in space. He's doing things. Mm -hmm. So when it says, "Hey, Mandor, go over here," he's like, "Okay," and he goes over yeah. there. Like that's that's his storyline. There's no, he doesn't have an underlying theme for why you should be invested in him as a character. Like, True. like you're looking at uh, Grogu. Like he has a storyline. Mando's just a guy with mm -hmm. armor on. Like he's just that's doing it. stuff. Someone says go over here. He says go over here. That's it. That's all. That's all I feel about when I watch the show is I like he's doing quests like a video game. Like, yeah. You know the the merchant the NPC mm -hmm. merchant is like you need to go to this over this planet and get me <laughs> some cars. He's like okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He comes back to the planet with the cars and he gets his twenty dollars or whatever. And then he goes, finds the next merchant. That's Mandalorian is that he has, yeah. I, I know he's supposed to have like the initial story, why he's doing what he is, but like, they're not following that at all. <laughs> it's not, he doesn't have a story that's progressing over the, like, there's no story arc. There's no hero's journey. He's just traveling, doing stuff. Yeah, you know, um, it, it was good to see Katie Sackhoff, though, you know, as a uh, Yeah, I, mean, I love know. her. She's awesome, um, man. You know, it's weird because, um, you know, when he went to Navarro, um, mm -hmm. you know, he went to see, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cargon, you know, um, Carl Weathers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> the whole purpose of going there was to revive Q111? Like, Really? Get a robot. Get another robot, yeah, dude. Like, yeah, like really? I mean, like, dude. I mean, like, with all this new tech, you know, just and I mean, the other interesting thing about this is like he tried to repair it. Then they went to the Azellians, who are these little small people. That was kind of yeah. cool, though. That was real cool, you know. It's just like these yeah, people are like really. Droid Smith. It's, it's comedy. Yeah, it really is. You know, but, but that's why like, he went there. Mm -hmm. In his universe, there's robots everywhere. Just grab another robot. <laughs> Yeah, and, and <laughs> reprogram it, you know, reprogram it to do some, like, crazy stuff. But then when he revived it, I guess the mm -hmm. old program kicked in, and he was trying to kill um, Grogu, which is like, you didn't think of that in the beginning? Yeah, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the logic for him to be like, I need to go get this thing. Get into the robot, bro. Like, this is a waste yeah. of time. Yeah, like, really. That's what I'm saying. As far as his quest is to go, this so far, right, Mandalorian's quest is to go take a bath 
on his home planet. That's his That's quest. It. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the entire Redemption. point of this show right now. This whole season. Yeah. Take a bath. When I um, when I watched this, I watched it yesterday, and also I just watched it before we started this pod, and I was like, yeah. so. I hope this isn't a season of redemption, like you said, where he's trying to get to the mines and bathe himself so he can, like, you know, become a Mandalorian again. You know, this is the way. I'm just like, really? So it's going to be him trying to find (laughs) this? And I guess in between he will have battles and things like that. I'm just like, okay, it's going to feel like a redemption sort of, like, season. I hope not. But I'm just saying, as far as a compelling storyline, taking a bath is not a compelling storyline no, that no, is not no. it i don't care how you you can dice it up and be like well he's gonna fight space pirates he's gonna do this and that taking a bath is not the most exciting thing that a show should be about i'm mm-hmm. sorry i just don't yeah. see it especially in star wars of all things like Come on, you if know. you were like hey this guy is the key to something or you know he that like the saber thing that he has everybody's out to go get it to steal it from him okay cool all that stuff is kind of cool, but taking a bath is the whole reason for this season right now. <laughs> I, 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 bro, this so, is trash. I mean, like, well, at least the first uh, episode was like, uh, you know. Yeah, like, they're um, going to fill in the back, back spaces or whatever and make it more interesting. But, like, yeah. the whole reason why this show exists for season three is for Mandalorian to go take a bath. That's it. That's what it feels like, man. And and if that's the case, I'm going to be highly disappointed. And you know what else? When I uh, watched the Mm. first episode um, of uh, Apostate, I Mm. kept thinking, I couldn't stop thinking about Andor. And I was just like, well, Andor, like, that was a real story. You know, that was yeah, just real things going on. Yeah, that felt like a real story. And I'm just like with here, you had a little a little slapstick and it's just like, oh, OK, you know, um, it, what is Grogu going to do? Is he going to like start using his powers and things like that? I mean, he was using his power to spin himself around the chair and grab, you know, just like red candy mm-hmm. from like a bowl and everything. I'm just like, yeah, when like- will Grogu <laughs> use his power to like switch some folks up? When will that happen? I don't know. He. At this point, he's a useless sidekick. That's he just it. causes trouble. You like, you got to save him every five minutes. Yeah, I want that as a sidekick. I I want my sidekick useful. He Let me ask me. you this here: something was um there was one interesting part I think in this um episode mm-hmm. when they were um in um hyperspace or you know just like in warp. I don't know what they call it. Do they call it slip space or a hi- hyperspace? Or hyperspace. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, when the episode started and um, Grogu was looking wheels. around to see whatever that was, like, in hyperspace that looked like mm. whales, but it also looked like... It looked like, like it was exactly like whales. So I don't know yeah. what it was. <laughs> but how 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 does that happen in space? I don't know. Like, you shouldn't be able to see any other things out there. Yeah. Because I know it's technically like a highway, but I don't know. You shouldn't technically be able to see anything. And uh, you I don't shouldn't... know. Maybe there's something to that. Excuse me, and you technically should not be able to see whales in space. Exactly, like I was saying, like it should be the stars going I mean, by. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's something we don't know, but we we just saw whales mm-hmm. like in you know hyperspace. It's like crazy warp drive or warp warp speed is is crazy. Um, the the <laughs> um the battle in space with the uh, pirates was pretty interesting. He did some really cool moves, some really cool maneuvers. You know, mm-hmm. just to like see that felt away. like Star Wars. That's yeah. that's Star Wars. Yeah. So um the, the the battle in space with the pirates was pretty cool, and then they rolled up on a uh, shards uh, ship. Mm-hmm. You know, um and it's just like ah okay, but he he got away, and then he went to this this planet where the Man- Mandalorian castle was with uh, Bo Katan. Again, that's mm-hmm. Katie Sackhoff. She appeared last season. I was just like, She's, yo, she, Katie's awesome, man. Everybody loves Katie. She Katie does. She appeared as Bo Katan. In the animated mm-hmm. series, the voice, yeah, yeah, you know, the voice in there, yeah. And then I was, and, and I said in one of my, um, one of my, uh, what's Basil watching, uh, you know, um, videos that Kate, uh, Katie Sackhoff, she does sci fi really well. That's her space. Mm-hmm. She loves to do sci fi, yeah. she does it really well. So I'm hoping that something pops off with her so we can see what's going on with her because she was pretty hardcore last season. So we'll see yeah, what's going on. Yeah, the fact that she's just sitting in the castle by herself, that's lame, Chilling. man. Get she needs stuff to do. 
It's Start like, battling people or something. Do we I don't have know. any? Do we have bottles of cognac there? You know, whatever. <laughs> you know, is she dropping edibles? She's what chilling. is she doing there? You she's know, chilling on a, She's sitting on a chair, just chilling. <laughs> and you, you know, chilling. <laughs> and you know, that was pretty much the episode. That's it. Mm-hmm. They cut it like you know when he left the castle. That was it. So yeah, yeah. with all that said, what are you going to rate season number three, episode one of The Mandalorian? apostate see here's the thing like i like mandalorian so like i would give like the show like a seven or eight but for me i would rate uh mandalorian the show a seven this episode i would give a five wow. like i like the show but like nothing happened on this show this show was so uneventful for and uh, you have a, a show about a gunslinger with a sword and uh, a mini Yoda, and you got spaceships and and you know bounty hunters. How do you make it an uneventful show? Like, how is that possible? Yeah, this, this is Book of Boba Fett levels of boring. Like, they need to get this thing together. Get in, get in gear. You're yeah. so much wasted potential here because of all the stuff that you have available to you. Exactly. I read some place where Pedro Pascal really wanted to play uh, Boba Fett, but um, you mm-hmm. know, old boy was like, "No, you're playing the Mandalorian." You know what? He I could agree do the voice. with you. Been fine. Let, yeah, let the other be... guy do the voice and yeah, let him exactly. Do the body. Um, I'm going to agree with you completely. This show, I like the show. I'm giving this show a seven on eight. This episode mm-hmm. to be the first episode of the latest season. I'm giving that a five, dude. It's, it just wasn't. Um, it wasn't anything happening. You know, it just it, there wasn't. This is the Mandalorian, Mando. You need to come correct. You know. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, like yeah. riding around and like trying to revive like Q one eleven, and it's just like really. I mean, oh my goodness! I, <laughs> you I don't, don't have any expertise in androids. What are you doing? Just drop it off and go about your business. Like, get a new android, dude. For? for real, get a yes. new android with new tech and everything else. It's just like really. Are mm-hmm. you serious? And once he gets a new android, how will this android follow him? I mean, the ship he's in is only like a two person ship. Where is he going to fit? You just yeah. drop him to the back or some, some like rope? Outside like outside or something, like... you know? It's, it's just like, come on, you know? Um, I was looking at um, episode two, and it looks like it's going to be about an hour long. So hopefully we'll get a lot more. I, I but this episode better. was crazy short. I was just like 37 minutes. Like, mm-hmm. when I saw how long the episode was, I was thinking one or two things were going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, from start to end, this episode was going to be just straight up like powerful right blasting shooting out tens of all around stuff. or yeah, yeah, yeah. to have such a short episode it's going to be kind of corny and boring and that's what it was it was corny and boring there was nothing they didn't move the needle with what's going on we know what he's trying mm-hmm. to do you know but i don't know man i mean looking for this mind it's a redem right now i think it's going to be a redemption season what do you think yeah i think you're right as far as storyline yeah. goes it's just going to be about him trying to figure out who he is or whatever, right. which <clears throat> at, we're too late in the show for this. Like you need to know that you should have got that out of the way, like in the first season. Yeah. And now exactly. you know you're on your path and you're good to go. Right. And now you're out doing stuff. Mm. Because ah, we'll, we'll see. Be, <laughs> because he revealed this face twice to uh Q one eleven and also to mm. Grogu. He's revealed to a bunch of people. He was on that plane. He's um when he's getting the soup. I think he revealed his fair stare too. Yeah, that's uh, true. There's a couple of people he's revealed it to. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And then remember in uh, that that shootout with the, the school or whatever, those kids. He oh, right, right, right. Too. Yeah, that's he's true. Yeah. That was a good episode, actually. <laughs> that was a great episode. That's what you I was know. expecting. I was like, okay. Yeah, that was a good episode. It's blazing. Like, we're going to have some real stuff going on. Nope. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. So we'll see what the... um you know, second episode does. So hopefully to be good. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keel. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.